if you go to lvsim.labvault.com, you will access the LVSIM Electromechanical Systems Simulator. You will have a warning about cookies, so you need to enable your cookies. It will probably ask you for an access code, but once you have entered it once, you don't need to enter it again. If you don't have the access code, you can still create circuits, you can save them, so you could use that for home assignments. You could also use that to show to your students what they would build in the actual lab. But you would not be able to turn the power supply on, meaning that you cannot take the measurements if you don't have that access code. Now what can I construct in there? I have all of my modules on the left, and that tab can go in and out. So for example, if I put a power supply, let's say I take the variable power supply. With that, let's suppose that I put a DC motor generator. I could build RLC circuits, transformers, motors, generators, transmission lines, all kind of stuff. So to do my connections, all I need is to click on the terminals that I want to connect. Now let's zoom in a little bit on that. And I will remove my tab for now. So that DC motor has armature here and I have my shunt. So if I take the variable DC, says 0 to 120, I could connect, let's see, positive with positive, and it's I will connect that with the shunt as well. And just for clarity, let's say I will change my wire color now. So let's say I take from neutral to the other side of the shunt. Now, as soon as I turn my power supply on, I see that my motor is not turning because the voltage is now zero, but if I increase that voltage, I see my motor starts turning. So my basic connections are good. Now I want to see the actual speed of the motor, so I can use a dynamometer on that. If I use that dynamometer as an example here, this one I will zoom on it because it has several features, it's one of the complex devices. I will need to turn it on, so the same steps that you take with the hardware you need to take with the software. I see right now that the function is a break, which would be useful for what I am doing. There is a start stop button. The command will tell you how much you are applying, and the function allows you to change to a prime mover, or a constant speed, constant torque, various things. And when I go through all my functions, I come back to a break. I could also use it as a power supply instead of as a motor, but I will not cover that right now. Now when this turns, the other one does not turn, so what I will need to do is to lower the front panels and put a timing belt between these. Now I can raise my front panel to be safer, and if I zoom out, I will see that now when I start my power supply, when I press start, I have a reading of my speed and my torque, as well as the mechanical power. So if I had electrical power, I could do efficiency calculations on my machine if I wanted to. When I increase the voltage, I see that the speed increases. These results should be the same ones that you get with the physical equipment to replicate the physical hardware. Now let's suppose on top of that I want to add some measurements. You can either use simple multimeters like this, but I have a tendency to prefer to use the data acquisition because it has a lot more features and is not that complex to use. The data acquisition has four voltmeters and four ammeters. So if you know how to use a handheld voltmeter and ammeter, you should be good. So let's say that I, instead of going to my power supply here with that cable, I will go first to a voltmeter. Now I have a warning. It says that I should turn the power supply off before I do that, which includes also this device here. So let's say I want to measure the voltage and I want to measure the current, so I want to go through an ammeter. Let's I'll put that through the ammeter here first. Another wire color to help me. This ammeter is coming from my voltmeter, which is coming from my power supply. It's easier to select a jack that is empty to start your new connections. 
And I will also need in that case to have the negative of the voltmeter connected to that. So I have power supply going to a voltmeter, positive of the power supply going through an ammeter before going to the machine itself. Now if I start that, I see my motor is running. I can start my brake, I see my power, I can brake more or less if I apply more brake, for example. It is a multi-turn, I see that the speed is dropping, which would have to be expected. In order to properly analyze the circuits, there are several instruments that are available. There is an 8-trace oscilloscope, there is metering, which is the most simple yet powerful, there is a phaser analyzer and a harmonics analyzer. Let's take a look at the metering window. Corresponding to the four voltmeters here, you have four voltmeters. And corresponding to the four ammeters, either in low current mode or in high current mode, depending where you connect it, you have your four ammeters. For the instrument to record, you need to start a continuous refresh. Now I do see values but they are in AC, so let's switch those to DC. From E1 and I1, I can now have my power. Any of those meters I can activate and deactivate as needed. In fact, each of these meters is configurable. If I click on its top name, I say I can measure voltages, sum of voltages, same thing for current, power, efficiency, whether mechanical or electrical for transformers, impedance, power factor, frequency, and many other things. I can also get the speed and the torque, so I can get the mechanical power. In that case, I would need to connect, as stated in the manuals, either a shaft encoder to get a very precise speed display, or the torque and speed with the analog ground into the corresponding inputs 7 and 8 with an analog ground. If I have many points to record, instead of writing everything manually, I can use the data table, which is right here. For the data table to have something to display, you need to have an instrument open before, otherwise it wouldn't know if you are recording from the meter, from the oscilloscope, what are the values that you want to record and so on. You first go to record settings and you tell what you want to record. By default, it is all of the meters that are on. If I click OK on this, let's say I start at that 20% value, I can record the data. And if I change my voltage, for example, go around 30%, now where is my data table? It's a separate window, so I would recommend in that case that either if you have two screens, that's great, or if you can make them coexist on the same screen, that works well too. So here I can record my next point change my voltage, record the next point, and so on. I would recommend you always leave a couple seconds with the parameters adjusted so the system stabilizes before you record your actual points. There is a basic graph capability built in, but you can also copy and paste that data into your lab report, and you can also export the file to a MATLAB or an Excel format. How do I remember all of that and how do I know what to connect in there? If you go into the help, you have contents and index. That will tell you how you operate LVSIM EMS and that's a PDF file that would be easy to save to any other locations if you want to. But you also have manuals and exercises. So each of these are in fact corresponding to a full software manual. If I want to do something, for example, about single-phase transformers or something like this, so let's say Unit 7, single-phase transformers, I can go into that PDF manual. And if I do a search, for example, Unit 7, because I don't want to go through all of those pages one by one, then I have here my theory. I will then have a procedure that tells you what to install into the workstation. 
they tell you make sure that the power switch is on. Connection of the USB port, you don't need to do that in the simulation software, but you would need to do it if it was real hardware. And these are the actual connections that I would do. So all the steps are very well detailed. You have places to note your answers, but this would require that you print that before. But you also have an e-learning package that is available for most of these exercises if you want to. Hoping that will be helpful. Thanks.